Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and for our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy Come, let us adore him. Thank 
Who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hechos de los Apóstoles Por aquellos días, Pedro se dirigió a los hermanos reunidos, que eran como 120 personas, y les dijo, Hermanos, tenía que cumplirse lo que el Espíritu Santo por medio de David ya había dicho en la Escritura acerca de Judas, el que se sirvió de guía a los que arrestaron a Jesús. Pues Judas era uno de los nuestros y tenía parte en nuestro trabajo. Pero fue y compró un terreno con el dinero que le pagaron por su maldad. Luego cayó de cabeza y se reventó, y se le salieron todos los intestinos. Cuando los que vivían en Jerusalén lo supieron, llamaron aquel terreno a Seldama, que en su lengua quiere decir campo de sangre. En efecto, el libro de los Salmos dice que su casa se vuelve un desierto y que nadie vive en ella y también que otro ocupe su cargo. Tenemos aquí hombres que nos han acompañado todo el tiempo que el Señor Jesús estuvo entre nosotros, desde que fue bautizado por, por Juan hasta que subió al cielo. Es necesario, pues, que uno de ellos sea agregado a nosotros, para que junto con nosotros dé testimonio de que Jesús resucitó. Entonces propusieron a dos, a José, llamado Barsabás y también Justo, y a Matías, lloraron así. Señor, tú que conoces los corazones de todos, muéstranos cuál de estos dos has escogido para que tome su cargo al servicio del apóstol que Judas perdió por su pecado cuando se fue al lugar que le correspondía. Lo echaron a la suerte y ésta favoreció a Matías, quien desde aquel momento quedó agregado a los once apóstoles.
from Paul's letter to the Philippians. This one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Here ends the reading. Proclama mi alma la grandeza del Señor, se alegra mi espíritu en Dios mi Salvador, porque ha mirado la humillación de su sierva, porque ha mirado mi pequeñez. from the Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you may bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. Here ends the reading.
Dear Andy, my friend, um, it is Tavo Makuba. Uh, for those that do not uh, know me, it's been such a pleasure to walk this Christian journey uh, together. I still have vivid memories of when I came for the uh, the, the, the synod uh, in, in in Texas, but more importantly, when we together walked in the hot and dusty, sometimes streets of, of, of the Holy Land uh, and occasionally uh, getting tired uh, together. So it is indeed a privilege uh, to be able to speak to your diocese and council. I have just finished the Synod of Bishops and I'm talking to you from uh, Bishop's Court uh, in Cape Town uh, in the gardens. Uh, the lessons really speak to me and I hope they will speak uh, to you to listen to those challenging words that fall powerfully uh, on our ears and in our hearts today. I quote them, let one another take his place. We have lived through tumultuous times. We have watched a virus destroy so much of what we have taken for granted. We have watched loved ones die, economies decimated, poverty stock our cities. We have watched the rise of racism and violence. We have seen populism colonize people's hearts and democracy come under direct assault, whether in the streets of Myanmar or in the capital in Washington, D.C. We have watched corruption rob the poor of hope, and I have to confront my own government publicly as some of the senior members fleeced the most vulnerable in the pandemic of the very oxygen they needed to breathe while lining their pockets. I have in these dismal times often remembered the words of that great icon of the struggle against apartheid, Trevor Huddleston. Words he quoted in some of the darkest days of oppression. Words of G.K. Chesterton, not for your comfort, not for your desire, save that the night grows darker and the seas rise higher. We have known those moments greatly over the past months. The disciples grappled with that shadow side as they grappled with the betrayal of one who had been with them. Yet they knew that the only way forward was to let him go and let another take place, to call forth something, someone new. If my sisters and brothers, the pandemic and the overwhelming social pathologies have taught us anything, it has been to engage in that spiritual discipline of letting go of the things that are toxic, people whose presence and leadership is no longer life-giving, and to let another take its place. In history, there are moments when some things have to die, racism has to die, gender-based violence and distorted patriarchy has to die, selfish economies have to die, and someone or something else has to take its place and call us to a new era. We cannot, must not accommodate Judas ideologies of our time. We must not abide the things that perpetuate second-class citizenship, economies that keep people poor, 
and women marginalized. Something must take its place. The pandemic, dear friends, has raised again the specific, the spectra of old patterns of injustice. The old patterns have ensured that access to COVID-19 vaccines, that the bulk lay with the first world countries and small doses donated to the poor. Even in this hour, vaccine nationalism than solidarity has dominated. Something new needs to take its place. Eduardo Galeano says very powerfully, looking beyond the betrayals of this hour, may tomorrow be more than just another name for today. I believe that that's what those disciples were reaching out for, as we should, something that is not just another name for this darkened today. Therein also lies the word of hope, the recognition that embedded in the dark night are those whose ministries, whose witness is ready to take us forward to open new vistas for us. I'm intrigued how those few lines at the end of the reading from the Acts instruct our hearts about the hope that we have within us. Firstly, those lines indicate that hope is not always obvious, not clear, that is, it has to be discerned. Justice or Matthias, discernment, the way forward is always born of disciplined times of prayer. It emerges as we hear in those contemplative parts of our hearts. Thomas Merton reminded us that prayer does not blind us to the world, but transforms our vision of the world and makes us see it. All people and the history of humankind in the light of God. People who are going to be beacons of hope for a post-pandemic world, who are willing to be architects of tomorrow that is different from today, who are going to take the place of the old are also challenged to be contemplatives. One further step, the disciples had to hear what was in the heart of each of those who were in contention for a new moment of leadership <clears throat> and a new moment of grace. They had to listen to the new voices, <coughs> pay attention to what was hitherto unheard, voices that were not in the foreground. According to my reading of this passage, hope emerges from unlistened voices, from the margins. Jonas Salk once wrote, hope lies in dreams, in the imagination and in the courage of those who dare to make dreams a reality. Hope is the gift offered by those who have courage. Nelson Mandela wrote after his 27 years of incarceration, I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. I felt fear myself more times than I can remember, but I hid it behind the mask of boldness. The brave man is not the one who does not feel afraid, but the one who conquers that fear. So my friends, my friend Bishop Andy and your diocesan council, 
The church has to emerge from the pandemic, from the fires of our social pathologies, the one language of the Acts of the Apostles, who must take the place of the one marked by betrayal, is the one who has the courage to listen to those who are not generally heard, the one who must take over the position, the church that must be born, must be one imbued with heart for contemplation and a spirit that is courageous. The records of the Acts of the Apostles is very clear. Those who take the place of Judas must be the witnesses to the resurrection. It could well be read as those who were in Jerusalem at that time, if that momentous event, those were the primary witnesses. Yet I think that it is more likely that it is those probably who went to the tomb. It is the story of Mary Magdalene, the story of the one whom Jesus loved, and the story of Peter. There is a thought that lingers in my mind. Mary Magdalene asks, where have you laid him? John is curious and enters the tomb. Both have a measure of curiosity both are looking for answers, for a way of understanding very new realities. I know an elderly spiritual director here in Cape Town who always points out that John, the theologian, was the first to encounter the empty tomb, to engage this uncharted territory and only afterwards, Peter, the bearer of the institutional church, he points out that it is the task of theologians, of a thinking church, to raise questions, to go into uncharted territory, to make sense of new spaces, and to keep a spirit of curiosity alive to think about new possibilities and weave together answers to questions that were not asked before. Our church especially, your diocese especially, after the pandemic, needs people who are curious, who are not afraid to raise awkward questions, to seek new answers, to suggest bold strategies of pastoral life, a curiosity that leads us to dream and build something new in an environment of love. I always hold in my heart that wonderful insight of Pierre Tilhard de Chardin. Someday after mastering winds, waves, tides and gravity, we shall harness the energy of love. And for the second time in the history of the world, man will have discovered fire. The curious mind takes us to new civilizations of love. That surely is the tradition of witnessing to the resurrection. Bishop Andy and friends, as you journey through these Dyson Council days, may the beauty of listening to the chronicler of the Acts of the Apostles also vouch say that they be the times of contemplation, moments of unusual courage, and an ending source of curiosity so that as the church in these new times, you may be the bearers of good news. God loves you, and so do I.
Amen. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día y perdona nuestras ofensas, así como nosotros también perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, tuyo es el poder y tuyo es la gloria, ahora y por siempre. Amén. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Collect for Saturday. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for the service of your sanctuary, and that our rest here upon earth may be pre preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, Rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Collect for peace. Colecta por la paz. Oh Dios, autor de la paz y amante de la concordia, conocerte es vida eterna y servirte plena libertad. Defiende a estos tus humildes siervos de todos los asaltos de nuestros enemigos para que, confiados en tu protección, no temamos la fuerza de ningún adversario. Por el poder de Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
It is our privilege at Council to remember all those who have served this diocese in the past and now find their eternal rest. Vincent Anderson, Dudley Baker, Luann Barrow, Vera Berger, Carmelita Blackwood, William Bodkin, Charles Cliff Burks, Sue Barton, Sue Burton, Larry Carpenter, Lloyd Chris, Fred Curry, Harriet Reed Cutchell, Charles M. Dalton, Harold R. DeMoss, Nancy Erbar Elkins, Betty Elliott, Dolores Goebel, Jean Harris Forrester Green, Margot Hall Hearn, Nancy Johnson, Ann Weir Jones, Charles Arthur Kasdorf, Josephine Krauss, Benjamin Okibo, Teresa Okibo, Luis L. Perry, Tynette Sweeney Putty, Edward Randall, Fleetwood Warner Range, Charles Hepburn Richardson, Joe Rossano, Robert Shearer, Mary Kay Schultz, Emily Shepard, Beth Ann Sykes, Norma Silva, Eugene Wentworth, Bill Wicker, and Barbara Williams. And in the clergy order, the Reverend Martha Francis, the Reverend Dr. Sean A. Cox, the Reverend Stephen L. McClaskey, the Reverend Dr. Bill Littleton, the Reverend Virginia Dabney Brown, the Reverend Russell D. Minter, and the Reverend John Buchanan. O God, whose days are without end and whose mercies cannot be numbered, make us, we pray, deeply aware of the shortness and uncertainty of human life, and let your Holy Spirit lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days, that when we shall have served you in our generation, we may be gathered to our ancestors having the testimony of a good conscience in the communion of the Catholic Church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a religious and holy hope, in favor with you, our God, and in perfect charity with the world. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ and for the means of grace and for the hope of glory and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time 
with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Thank you.